Welcome to the Fatherhood Challenge, a movement to awaken and inspire fathers everywhere to take great pride in their role and to challenge society to understand how important fathers are to the stability and culture of their family's environment. Now, here's your host, Jonathan Guerrero. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. My guest is Bernie Landells, and Bernie is an author and a speaker. She also has done a lot of trainings on a really interesting topic that, honestly, I've never heard anything about this until a conversation that we had had some time ago. I learned a lot from that conversation, and so I thought it would, it would add a lot of value to have her here with us so that she can teach us all. So, Bernie, thank you so much for being with us. Great to be here, Jonathan. So normally we have a dad joke or a mom joke to start out our program. I thought I'd pick a mum moment because it could also be a dad moment, you know. Uh, and it goes back probably about 15 years ago to when I was picking up my youngest son from daycare. And uh, I don't know if the listeners out there, if any of you, you know, have your child at daycare, sometimes you go and you sort of hold off before in, you know, so interacting with them if they've been there all day. And this particular day, I did just that. I stood in the room watching how my son was interacting with everybody outside. And to set the scene, the uh, early years educator uh, was sitting on one of those mini trampolines. And the children were just having a wonderful time. They were all queued up behind her and they were bouncing her pushing down on her shoulders, and they thought it was hilarious, and they were all taking this in turn. So I watched, and then it was my son's turn. And what I saw him do was place his hands on her shoulders, say something to her, and he didn't bounce her. He squeezed her shoulders and gave her a little massage. And, oh. I, and my heart just melted. And this is completely a true story, and I'll unpack why he did what he did as we talk, Jonathan. Wow. This is a powerful start. You've developed quite a career and a passion for helping parents learn how to connect with their baby physically. So what is your story? How did this become your passion? Well, Jonathan, my oldest son is now 22, and until I picked him up, I really had had nothing to do with babies. But I had trained in massage in the 90s. So when I was faced with this little being, I thought, well, I must learn how to massage. Uh, we'd had a little bit in class when I was studying. And so I just sort of made it up as, you know, he grew. Uh, then I had the opportunity in 2002 to train as an infant massage instructor which meant I could teach parents what I'd just learned and I wish I'd known when Nick was a baby. Uh, you know, a year later, my second son was born and so he was the one that benefit, benefited most and he was the one at daycare that gave the massage to his teacher. Because, you see, one of the benefits of, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, touch uh, is I found that if parents could uh, engage with their children in this way, uh, there were so many benefits. So it, it did become a passion. And, and the last 20 odd years, I've worked with so many parents. And, you know, it's not like a job. It's, it really is a passion. So that's, that's a little of my story. I can see the connection between um, your first story so your son was almost intuitively picking up on a skill that you had learned. And you know what? That's one of the biggest benefits, I think, of parents massaging their children is that one day they'll be able to massage you. And I've got wonderful memories of Ben sitting on my back massaging me. But also they then have this, I think, different relationship with others. It's interesting in our house, one of the fun things to do at, at the end of a day and both of our boys just get a kick out of it. They make us lay on the floor. We'll either lay on a floor or lay on a bed and they literally will just walk up and down our spine. And Fantastic. It can be so relaxing. 
there's no training or anything. Maybe there should be, but there isn't there. It's just for fun. They just enjoy doing it. And I find it very relaxing. It's, and so it's interesting how kids can pick up on that. Absolutely. I'm not sure I want my uh, two boys to do that to me. (laughs) So why is touch so important for babies and what happens when they don't get enough of it, both in the short term and all the way into adulthood? Well, the the benefits of touch um, go both ways. There's benefits for baby in terms of uh, sort of stimulation, uh, body awareness, neural development. You know, it, it helps them grow. Um, it stimulates sort of the, the vagus nerve, helps with digestion. You know, there's a whole realm of benefits. But the the one that I really like is the the two way benefit in the release of hormones. Um, which really helps with bonding. And they've also done research uh, with new mums who uh, suffer from postnatal depression and that massage and touch, because of the release of those endorphins, the feel-good hormones, that sort of thing, uh, the benefit is huge. So it's not just the benefit for the baby, but it's actually beneficial for the parents. Um, There's stories of uh, orphanages uh, from years ago where infants were put in their cots and they were fed, but they were not interacted with or touched, and they sadly died. So in terms of if they don't get touched, that's the extreme. You know, it will affect their development. Uh, If, you know, they don't get enough interaction with their parents, then, you know, socially they may be um, delayed and and equally development if they're not touched, moved, held, you know, bounced, all of those sort of interactions that you can have with a baby and a parent, it can affect um, development. So touch is not an optional thing. This is kind of what I'm getting from this. Touch is not optional. It's essential we were we were created that way. We have to have it to thrive. Absolutely, absolutely. It's as important as food. You know, if you're familiar with the old Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, it's right down there in terms of warmth, shelter, food. Um, you know, touch is vital. We're born to touch, which I think is why, you know, the last two years of COVID and we've been socially distancing and that sort of thing, we're not designed for that. We're, we're designed to interact. You know, we think of touch and babies as just a motherhood thing, certainly not appropriate or relevant for new dads. Is this true or false and why? And I think we might've already gotten a hint to that answer, yeah. but I'd love to hear yeah. what you have to say about it. Yeah. Wash your mouth out. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you know, dads have to be involved. Uh, and I think what has, you know, happened for a lot of guys is they just don't know how to, uh, they don't know how to, like what what to do you know the the mum's feeding the baby offering that nurturing you know they might get the the raw end of the deal and have to change all the nappies but you know the uh touch and interaction with a male figure is completely different to a female figure yeah uh and i think that's important uh that's why we have a mother and father creating a child you need this balance um, of hormones, interactions, touch, speech, you know, they all bring something different. And what I've observed uh, with dads, um, father figures, is that it's a lot more fun, it's a lot more playful, uh, their hands are bigger, um, and, and they get a different response from the baby. So you're stimulating the baby in a different way. And that's really important. Uh, I had a fascinating conversation with another guest and we got into some of the different ways that dads can bond and connect with their kids. And it really opened my mind to this. And that's the idea. We think of, of the only way dads bond is after the baby's born. So a lot of dads who are not really in tune with the how bonding happens and they're not really aware of it most of them just like okay well i'm gonna wait till this baby's a lot older and i can actually play with him or her and interact on that level 
And the bonding that needs to happen needs to happen much, much earlier than that. But what blew my mind is that there are opportunities for that bonding to take place in the womb. So how is touch relevant there? Yeah, absolutely. And um, actually, touch is one of the earliest senses that a baby develops uh, in the womb. And uh, so touch from the external world is important. It it actually reminds me uh, of some research that was done years ago where they had these parents at a, a certain time of day touching the belly and interacting with the belly to see what would happen. And they were measuring, I think, the serotonin levels. And then, so I just put a disclaimer here, no babies were harmed in this. But then what they did is they stopped the parents doing that for a few days and they watched the levels of serotonin um, rise. So the stress levels, this baby was used to this touch and then all of a sudden it stopped. And so it was hunting for it and going, well, where is it? Um, And I think that piece of research really reinforced to me how it starts during pregnancy with mother, father placing the hands on the belly, just when, you know, they're sitting watching TV, Um, particularly when the, the quickening starts. So those early kicks is a great way, I think, for dads to realize how real this is, that here's this little football player you know, <laughs> karate kid mm. um, developing inside uh, their partner in their partner's womb. So touch, um, just hand on the womb, uh, hand on the belly, <laughs> and directly the womb, and and things like speech and talking sends a vibration through. Uh, and so vibration is a, a another sort of stimulation that we don't think about. We think about um, speech in terms of the baby can hear. And whilst they can, it sends a vibration through their system, I think. So, you know, singing, talking, telling stories, it all starts in those early days. And it's really important. Okay, I have to know this. Can the babies really understand the difference between their dad's touch on on the belly and any other touch? In other words, do they understand and recognize distinctly the dad's touch? Look, I don't know the answer to that question, Jonathan, and I don't know if anyone can research that to prove it. Um, but I think definitely through voice, uh, a baby will recognise the voice, you know, and turn to hear a, a familiar voice, uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's a that's a tricky one. I'll have to ponder and see what's out. That's fascinating. But at the very least, the takeaway from this is that there, the opportunities for touch can happen before the baby's even born. And so there's plenty for a dad to start that process and to get into that habit. Absolutely. And I used to teach partner massage. So I would get the mums and dads um, or the mum and the carer or um, birth partner uh, and teach them uh, in the sort of later stages of pregnancy, how how to be there for the pregnant woman who's going through labour. And this was a really um, rich session, particularly for the fathers, because it would be, you know, hands on the belly during contractions. So, again, here's this touch. So if they haven't been used to it during the pregnancy, um, you know, it was foreign for some dads to sort of want to touch. They think they might hurt the baby. Uh, but to be hands-on during labour uh, brings a whole other level that they're part of it, uh, which I really, really have enjoyed um, over the years, seeing these dads, you know, in the early stages of pregnancy and then during labour actually getting hands-on rather than sitting there going, are you okay, dear? Can I get you anything? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So touch is really important during labor and it can help reduce pain and speed up labor. Do you have a specific story of a positive outcome from a dad who stepped in and actually put effort into physically connecting uh, with his baby or babies? Well, look, I've I've got a recent uh, story from a woman I was speaking to. And uh, because I've, aside from this, I've become a little bit interested. I've gotten interested in feet and I've become interested in club feet and Talking with this woman, 
it was their third child. And she said that something that happened was that the father had to be more involved physically with this child. Um, you know, they were in casts, they were in braces, so that they couldn't do, you know, as much touch as perhaps they wanted. But he was more involved with this child physically. So handling them, taking them to, you know, obviously the therapy and the doctors and that sort of thing. And he disclosed to his partner that he felt more connected through being involved um, with that child than he did with the other two. Now, he didn't love them any less, of course, but because he was involved so much physically, there was this bond. And, you know, I share that one because it's, you know, an extreme event. And so if you're just involved every day without a hurdle like club feet, um, then this bond becomes stronger. It takes me back to an event that happened. Well, it was the birth of my first son. And uh, when we were having all kinds of meetings and I remember I was trying to get prepared for it. And uh, the midwife was also trying to get me prepared as well. Um, and in the planning for all of this, one of the things that I was very insistent on was not only being present, but I wanted the very first thing that my son felt when he came into the world to be the hands of his dad. Yeah, to me, amazing. that was, that was non-negotiable. This was not up for debate. This was not, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can't No, this is going to happen. Uh, and it was so, so important to me. I kept Absolutely. thinking about the time that he had spent in his womb and that time was with his mom and it was great. He probably heard my voice. Maybe he recognized me, but now he's coming into this world that is completely foreign to him. Pretty much everything about it is foreign to him. I can only imagine what type of emotions there might be going on even in his little head. And it's just like, I, I was not going to have him coming into the world and feeling alien touches of latex and mm. weird cloths and things like that. It's like, no, it's going to be the bare hands of his father. That is the very first thing that he's going to feel coming into the world. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah. What a lucky boy, I say. So, you know, for me, you know, the reason our babies uh, are useless, <laughs> they're pretty useless in those early days is so that we can care for them and look after them and that develops a stronger bond. So for you to take this new babe that's just passed down that birth canal and say, I'm here for you, I'm going to look after you through your touch and holding and say, you're going to be safe, secure, that is so reassuring because, God, it must be scary for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But you have just reassured them, I've got you. And the, the powerful moment happened for me when I pulled him towards me and I'm, and I'm, I'm bringing him towards my chest. And as I'm doing this, as I bring him towards my chest, a very powerful moment happens when he looks and he scans the room and he's looking around and then he moves his head over to my direction and his eyes very purposefully look right up into mine and they just stay there. And we just locked eyes. Mm, wow. There were, there was something about that moment that was unforgettable. And to me, that felt like the cement of the bond. Yeah, definitely a deep connection. Let's change gears just a little bit. And let's talk about a situation of a broken home or divorce. How is touch from both parents helpful with the healing process of their children in that kind of a situation? Yeah, interesting question, Jonathan. And I guess if I reflect on this, you know, personally, um, having gone through a divorce and thinking about my children, I think children sometimes, depending on their ages, of course, feel that the parent that is left doesn't love them anymore, perhaps. Yeah. So if you've got this, this scenario, 
if both parents have from day one been providing touch, security through touch, love through touch, it's a physical entity that then if something happens and the family unit is broken up for whatever reason, they still have that sort of tangible, that touch to where words perhaps don't um, help the situation, but to say, I've, I've still got you and I still love you. Um, you know, often it's, it's the problem at the parent level. It's not the children level. And so I guess that's where I sort of really love to teach both parents. It's not that I'm wishing for divorce, but um, it's equally important that they both can show love and uh, that unconditional love in a safe way of touch. Uh, so I think, therefore, that would help in the healing process for children so that they understand that both parents equally um, still love them. Does that sort now, of answer your question? It does. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, because that can be the one equalizing factor that they can potentially experience that lets them know that they are still loved equally, that they are still the center of both parents' love and attention. And that can be almost a salve in, in one sense from a lot of the pain that's going on. And it can be, I can imagine it being a reassurance that they are not the cause, that it is not mm. their fault. Yeah, and it is the one sort of leveler. You know, I hear stories of, of parents and, you know, whichever one then provides, you know, the bike, the this, the that, the toys, they've got the money to spend on the child and mm. perhaps the other partner doesn't. But if they've both got touch, you can't put a value on that. It's equal. Yeah. And when it really comes down to it, all of the other things, the material things are not essential things, no. but the touch is, which, you know, this takes us all the way back to how we started this episode where we talked about um, the worst case scenario without it. I mean, we've just proven you can't live without it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I I've talked about massage, but touch comes in so many different forms, Jonathan, you know, be it a hug, a pat on the shoulder holding a hand, yeah, um, it doesn't have to be the formal, you know, I'm going to give you a massage type mm -hmm. touch. It is just that that contact with intention of love. So, you know, hugs and holding hands and those sorts of things are quite um, are seen as safe forms of touch. Mm -hmm. When you start getting into massage, you know, and unfortunately, this is some of the experiences I've had with dads, particularly if they have girls, if they've got baby girls, is I don't want to touch because I might get a label as a someone, you know, pedophile or, you know, that's the worst case scenario. But they are unsure about how to touch their little girls and what others may think. And when I teach infant massage and my training was through the International Association who have really strong sort of protocols and one of the protocols that you start even before your baby can speak is around asking permission to touch. Mm. And so you would have your baby there and you would, there's various cues, you know, would you like to have a massage? Now they're not going to go, yes, please, I'd love one. Uh, but it sets up the safe boundary. If you are going to touch as in massage, you ask permission. And then as the child gets older, They've got a choice. They can say no, and as a parent, we respect that. Um, so I think that's really important to understand that there's different forms of touch, but it, if it's going to be the more intimate touch through massage, um, it's a consent scenario. You've written an incredible book called Finding Their Feet. What essential tools can dads find in this book to help them connect with their kids? And how can dads get a hold of you for help or for questions? Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Jonathan. So uh, finding their feet. Uh, yeah, it's about feet. <laughs> and <laughs> But it's actually more, uh, as I was writing it and once it, um, you know, I was holding it in my hands, a bit like giving birth to a baby, less painful though, I think, uh, <laughs> is that I reflected on it and, and getting some 
uh, reviews from dads, it was like I've actually sort of written this Mechanics 101 for dads. Uh, so the book is really about the growth of their baby uh, with a focus on feet because once the baby's born, well, well, from conception, their main goal is to get walking. Yeah, That's the one thing. We're born to move. We're born to be bipedal. So the feet are really important. So there's a lot of information there about looking after the feet but how the, the body develops. And so with every sort of chapter or phase of each a uh, bit of information, there's activities. There's ways that dads and mums and grandparents and siblings um, can get involved. And so, as I say, I think it's sort of a mechanics book in that, well, here's my baby. All right, I can do this with it. Oh, and this goes up and this goes down. Um, if I swing them around, I'm helping their vestibular system. So I explain why uh, these activities are important. And it's all about building this wonderful creature that they have created. Uh, and so that was my intent, was to help parents. That uh, you don't need stuff. You actually just need your hands. You need your body. You need your willingness and your heart. Um, so that was my intention. So there's lots of activities there. I've got other activities on my website that get access once you've got my book. But there's other ones on my website, you know, around passive movement, little video clips that people can visit my website, which is um, www.bernielandles.com. Uh, or if you can't remember that or know how to spell it, then look for findingtheirfeet.com. Uh, and on there I've got a contact form so people can reach out and ask me questions or you can find me on social media. Thank you, Bernie. And just to make everything easier for uh, for our audience, if you go to thefatherhoodchallenge.com, that's thefatherhoodchallenge.com and you go to this episode and you go to the description, I'm going to put all of the links and references in the description. So it'll be all in one place. So it'll be easy to find. So before we go, Bernie, what is your challenge for dads listening now? Start today if you haven't already. Start with a hug or holding a hand, playing with their feet. Just get your hands on them in a nice way. <laughs> yeah don't put it off to tomorrow just see the reaction and see how it feels for yourself but start today bernie thank you so much for taking the time to be with us i'm really grateful pleasure absolute pleasure the more that we can spread the word you know the happier our children will be the more resilient our children will be absolutely thank you Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fatherhood Challenge. If you would like to contact us, listen to other episodes, find any resource mentioned in this program, or find out more information about the Fatherhood Challenge, please visit thefatherhoodchallenge.com. That's thefatherhoodchallenge.com.